Welcome to your first step towards understanding assembly language programming, where we'll cover the basics of how to write your first assembly language program, what the minimum program looks like and how to make it reusable, what each line of code does in a very basic form, how to upload the code to the microcontroller, and the major functions with the MPLAB X programming environment. To get started, we'll create a program that simply turns a LED on and off, which is a common starting point known as the Blink program. It's the hello world of microcontrollers to verify your programming tools are correctly set up to write code into the device. This will gently guide you into the use of the MPLAB X software and loading programs into the microcontroller. So looking at the circuit, just to give you a little bit of an understanding of what will we doing? We have the PIC microcontroller here, and the PIC is broken up into different parts. So we've got power supplies, so that's our positive and our negative input. We have down here a reset input. We've got the oscillator, so just looking at these two parts here, which is driven by a 10 megahertz oscillator. And then we have uh, four other ports labeled as RA0 through to 7, RB0 through to 7, RC0 through to 7, and RD0 through to 7. Now you may notice with RA, it's actually also able to do analog inputs, but we've then got a port RE, which is also labeled as AN. So this is just a little confusing. Port A is actually split up depending on the function into two separate ports, but we're not going to get any more detail than that at this stage. So on port RC0, so port C pin or output 0, we've got an LED connected up just via a resistor, and our objective is going to be to make this flash on and off at a constant rate. All right, without wasting any further time, we'll open up the MPLAB X uh, development software uh, and start writing some basic code. So we'll just go through this slowly. So to find MPLAB, if it's not immediately visible there, we can just go MPLAB and be cautious not to grab the wrong one. There's one that's MPLAB X IPE that's not the one we want. It's the MPLAB X IDE, Integrated Development Environment. So we'll open that one up. Next step we need to do is create a new project. So over here we've got new file, new project and open project. So it's the new project one. And it's going to ask us for the type of project all of the work that we'll be doing will be standalone project, so it doesn't require anything else to make it operate. So we'll do that and go next. In the type of device, this is where we specify the particular microcontroller. You can either filter by different family types, but it's quicker if you know your chip number just to go pick 18F452 uh, and from the list choose that one and go next. Alright, your programming tool. So I personally have a PIC kit 4, but you may have uh, something such as an ICD3 which has an inbuilt debugger or some others. So choose the one that suits yourself and go next. And then choose your compiler. So I've got a few different compilers here. Because we're doing assembly language, which ASM is a short for, we will choose the most recent assembly language one and go next and give the project a name. So I will call this Blink. Now if I was to call it Blink Test or something like that, I would actually get an error at some points when I'm trying to run it because MPLAB does not like having spaces. So if you do need to have a space between words, change it to an underscore. But for me, I'm just going to leave it as Blink for the moment and just accept the path that it's in providing it's not a network path it must be a logical so it must have a, a c colon slash or a d colon slash or something like that okay so we'll go next and that will then open up these files 
or folders I should say and the main one we're interested in is the source files there's nothing in there at the moment so we now want to add a, a file which is where we actually write our program so we right click on source go new and in other choose assembler and we want a assembly.asm file so next give it a name it can be the same as the project name so I'm just going to call it blink as well and don't change the folder from the default and finish so now that we've got an area to put our program in we need to actually start putting in some code now I have what I call a boilerplate now a boilerplate is basically a predefined template of uh, code that you'll reuse over and over again so I've just copied it to my click clipboard and I'll paste it in there and basically what it has is some introductory information about what you're doing followed by stuff that's common to every program you'll be doing so I'll give this the title of blink put today's date in and you can put in uh, some additional notes in this area down here just to let people know anything special that they need to know so let's say you're using a board that needs certain switches turned on so you go through and note that through here you'd also note what the different ports do so um, we'd say uh, blink LED on off at port RC0 and delete those things there um, so yeah you put as much detail or as little as you need in that area okay so moving down we've got includes and assembler directives so I will create another video which details what the include does but at this stage just accept that you need it there all this is doing is bringing in a common set of instructions specific to this chipset and these lines below tell the compiler how to set various states in uh, the chip when it's programmed so we're telling it that it's running on a high speed oscillator which references the crystal frequency brownout detection which is when voltages start to drop down we've turned off watchdog timer is off uh, I can't remember what LVP is so you just put them in there's no need to be too concerned of what they are at this stage and then we have the org and then all zeros so the 0x says we're dealing in hexadecimal and the rest of the zeros is a physical memory location address so org says this is where program starts it physically tells the compiler when you're building the program put it at location zero and build it forward from there then we have go to start basically what that does is this will be placed in that location zero and it will tell it to jump to this point in the program where we start all of our normal code now the bits in between I like to keep them there as a standardization you don't have to do it but it helps to keep things tidy and structured and easy to scan the eye through as you're going now a program will always have some initialization that's how we set up whether ports are inputs and outputs and various other things um, we have a, a loop that goes on forever so we'll put most of our code in there after the program's been initialized if we're creating extra functions that we'll call repeatedly we can create them in here and then at the end of every program must be an end statement it physically tells the software that when you get to this point that is the end of the program we don't need to keep on going we're now going to start to put some code in so the way the program will flow is it will hit this point go to start it will jump down to here 
and it flows sequentially through unless we put in other goes or other statements that redirect flow. So for the moment, we'll just assume it flows straight down. So after start, I need to set up some initialization to say where my LED is connected. So if you remember from the diagram here, we've got RC0 is connected to the LED. So we need to create this as an output. So there's a command that's called tris. So if we go TRIS, this basically sets port directions. And I can make all of port um, C as an output by just going clear TRIS C. So I'll go CLRF, which is saying clear an F register. TRIS is a register. And so it's TRIS C. And I'll just put a comment in there, set uh, port C to all outputs. Now we need to put on in the code to actually turn the light on and off. So to do that, we can just turn the entire port C on and off for simplicity. When we get more detailed, we'll start to turn individual bits or outputs on and off. But for the moment, we'll do the whole port. So that is done with a, a set F. So set an F register. And the F register is port C. So this will turn the entire port to being high output. And again, we'll just comment that. Turn port on. Then we want to turn it back off. So we'll do a clear F port C and turn port off. So if we did that, we can basically turn it on and off. But what's going to happen is it will happen so quickly, our eye won't actually see it. In fact, it'll probably happen in, I think it's 0.08 of a microsecond. So we won't see a thing. So we're going to need to introduce a delay in between. So I'm just going to put a comment there for the moment and come back to it that we need a delay there. Now, assuming that we've got the delay and the program flows straight through, so it will turn on, it would delay, it would turn off, and then it would flow through to end and the program would stop. So we don't want it to stop. We want it to keep on looping in here forever. So we can put a label in here, so similar to what we've done with start. So a label or a named section basically has the colon over it. So we will call this uh, loop, which is sort of from the Arduino world. They use loop. And below here, we can go, go to loop. So that will just keep it looping around and around and around. Now, my code's starting to get a little bit messy with its indents. It is actually good practice to keep everything at the right indent. So a loop, or sorry, a, um, a name should always be aligned to the far left column. And then you start to indent your coding from there. So I should have that indented. And I also like to put another indent. So indents are tab spot, tabs, just to keep it looking all nice and in line, makes it easy for the eye to read. Now I've added a function down here that I'm calling delay. So that one there. And what delay will do is basically go through this series of commands in a loop, which will just cause a one second delay. I won't go into any detail of that yet. Just accept that it's approximately one second. And we call that by adding this call delay. So it basically as it flows through, we'll go turn the LED on, call delay, which will jump us down to this program. It'll loop through here to burn a second of time. It will then return to the line after the call, which is this one. It'll turn the LED off, and then it will loop back and repeat that indefinitely. Now, part of this delay, I've had to add what we call variables. So values like this are variables. They're basically a memory location that stores piece of data and I've defined them up here. 
Again, we'll look at this later, but just accept that it's there at the moment. At this point, we're basically ready to load the program into the PIC microcontroller. But before we do, we need to compile it to make sure there's no errors. So compile is these two buttons here, or build. So the difference between them, the brush is a clean build, and this is a normal build. You only need to do a clean build when there's been some major changes, new imports, and things like that to your code. Or if for some reason your code looks all right and you can't work out why it won't build, just try a clean build. It doesn't actually hurt to use this all the time for smaller applications because it's very quick. So I'm going to click that. Okay, so it's gone through and it's cleaned it and it's told me that I have a few warnings here. Now these aren't physical errors, they could be ignored, but I'm just going to have a look at them. So by clicking on each of these, they're hyperlinks, starting from the first one, it says I have a directive in column one. So I'll click on that and you can see I've got these apostrophes here. So what that's saying is it doesn't like the very first column having um, any instructions in it. So I'm just going to indent them. So I can highlight the whole lot and select uh, press tab, or I can also indent using this button up here. So that should have cleared that. I'm not sure why that one's still there, but we'll recheck in a moment. Scrolling down, sorry, we'll go back to the output window. So we've cleared those ones. Uh, found that one there. So I've got a return is in the wrong column, so I hit that, and I can see my end is also in the wrong column, so I'll tab that one in. So I'll recompile now. And it's come up with a build successful, no errors, nothing I need to look at. Now just to give you an example of an error, I'll go back and I'll, I'll put an intentional error in there. So let's... Um, uh, I'll drop a letter off of that. So if I compile that now, so I've got some errors in red. So I click on, again, the first hyperlink in the list, symbol not previously defined, and it tells me it there. So it gives me a pretty good indication of where the error is. So I look at that, I know it's missing a D, put it in, recompile, I'll do this one this time. Doesn't make any real difference. And it's a clean build. And the last thing we need to do is load the program actually onto the chip. And that is done via this button here, which is sending from the computer to the chip. You can also read from the chip back into the computer, but we won't be touching that. So I'll click on that. It'll basically go through saying that the build was successful, so it compiles it again. It will then connect to the chip. You may get prompted with uh, checking the correct voltage. So as long as you have chosen the right chip that will be the correct voltage but just double check on it it should go through say programming complete and then your chip will be programmed with the blink program so hopefully you've been successful with following along and you've got your first blink program running so the things that will be coming up next will be controlling ports by bits so rather than just turning an entire port on or off we'll be turning individual bits on and off how we calculate the timing such as that delay, uh, where we start to break down how each individual clock cycle is calculated, what the main instruction opcodes do and how to use them, and the special function registers, which you'll use a lot of. So I hope you can join me next time. If you haven't as yet subscribed, please do so, so you'll get notified, and I'll see you then. Yeah, right here, do it. Do it.